Is there life beyond Earth? Humans have probably been asking that question for as long as we've been able to look up at the stars. Do recent advances in technology offer some answers? I'm here with SETI Institute's Dr. Seth Shostak, who believes we have finally arrived at a point where the discovery of extraterrestrial life is not only possible, but also likely within a matter of decades. Dr. Shostak, it's a big universe. How can you be so confident that we'll bump into proof of life within a few decades? Well, that's mostly an argument, Harry, based on the march of technology, if you will. I'm, I'm speaking to you here from the Silicon Valley, and as you know, this is a hub of innovation. And a lot of that innovation, the digital electronics, is used to search for at least the intelligent variety of life. And, you know, given the speed at which that's moving forward, it seems reasonable to me that in the next couple of decades, we might trip across a signal that would prove there's somebody out there. What is the SETI Institute for our audience members who might not know? Well, SETI, it, you know, it's almost my name, but that's coincidence. It's the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And so that's, you know, in a way, our most well-known project here, where we use big antennas, just the way Jodie Foster did in the movie Contact, to try and eavesdrop on signals broadcast by aliens. But in fact, most of the, most of the scientists down the hall here are actually looking for life that might be nearby and not so intelligent, like bacteria under the surface of Mars. Okay, so we haven't yet discovered any signal that gave us any indication that we weren't alone, right? No, we haven't, uh, lamentably. But uh, we, in fact, I've got to tell you, the bottom line here is so far, we haven't found any life beyond Earth. And, you know, <laughs> whether it's intelligent or otherwise, we haven't found pond scum uh, beyond Earth. But I really think that, you know, finally, that situation is likely to change within the lifetime of of the people watching this uh, this cast. So is that because just the equipment is better now than it was 20, 50 years ago? It's mostly that. I mean, think about finding bacteria under the surface of Mars. We just mentioned that. Or, or under the icy skin of some of Jupiter's moons or in the lakes of Titan, a moon of Saturn. Uh, we couldn't do anything about that 30 years ago, but now we can send spacecraft there and actually look. So when it comes to finding life in our solar system, well, clearly, we can do a lot more than we could have done then. But in terms of eavesdropping on signals that would tell us about intelligent aliens, that technology has also changed. In fact, it more or less doubles in speed every couple of years. And plus we have telescopes that have way better tools on them that are up in space compared to the ones that were down on Earth looking out, right? Well, we do have those, and those are able to see things that you can't see from the Earth simply because of the Earth's atmosphere. For example, you might use a really big telescope in space to, you know, just look at a little bit of the light bouncing off the atmosphere of somebody else's planet around another star. And if you found oxygen in that atmosphere, you'd say, you know, Bob, not sure what it is, but they must have photosynthesis there. So that's a way to find life, too. You know, there are always going to be critics and cynics who say, wait a minute, why are we even doing this? What are the odds? They seem astronomically tiny or infinitesimal. Why should we be spending energy looking out and figuring out whether we're alone or not? Well, you could have said the same thing about funding Chris Columbus, right? I mean, you know, look, Chris, we got other problems here. We got social problems. We got economic problems. We got people in the streets who don't have enough to eat. You can always make that argument. But the facts are that exploration, and that's what this is really, exploration always pays off, and usually in ways, you know, you didn't figure. I mean, <laughs> the, the age of exploration, you know, opened up opportunities for Europe that had never existed before. They changed the world, in fact, and it was a relatively small investment at the time. The same is true here. All the efforts to find life in space, you know, that's, I don't know, cat food for a week in terms of the economic impact. But do you think that we are... Uh, parallel to Columbus in the sense that what he thought he knew about the rest of the planet, is that about where we are in terms of what we know about the rest of our galaxy or even the, or bigger the universe? Well, it's hard to say, but, you know, Chris Columbus is often uh, accused of uh, thinking that the world was very small, you know, and so forth, that he was going to land in Japan and all that stuff. He, he thought he did land in Japan, but he really was actually fairly savvy. He was just trying to get the money, and he may have simply lied to, to the funders about how big the Earth was. In, in some sense, we are in a parallel situation because Columbus had no idea about these continents that were blocking his way to the Far East, that they had people, they had civilizations and so forth. We know nothing about life in space, but what we do know is that there are a lot of worlds in our galaxy, maybe a trillion worlds out there, and, and if one in a million of them 
is you know suitable for life well that's still uh, what is that? that that's still a million other planets in our own galaxy just our galaxy that might have life now you can say hey you know none of them count we're the only kids on the block that's a little self-centered right right uh, okay so best case scenario you pick up a signal what happens then what does SETI do well, you get excited, actually, and we have all, <laughs> we always have a bottle of champagne at the observatory, uh, you know, and so presumably you'll open that up, although every time I go to the observatory, it's a new bottle of champagne, so I don't know, maybe somebody thinks it's <laughs> something, but, but what you really do is you would spend the next three or five days just checking out the signal to make sure, you know, it's really, really a signal and it's not a Stanford University prank or something like that. So that's what you would do, but all that time, and we know this because of false alarms that we've occasionally had, all that time the media will be calling up and they'll say, hey, you guys picked up the signal, what about it? So it'll be a very messy story. It will break long before we're even sure that we found something. All right, Dr. Seth Shostak from SETI, thanks so much. My pleasure.